As of November 11, 2017, Skyrim is now six years old. There's been thousands of Dragonborn, aka Dovahkiin, and we all have been absolutely blown away by the world of Elder Scrolls V. It's been a good journey, but just like Bilbo fucking Baggins, every good journey must come to an end, and all we need now is a Frodo to succeed us into the next one. So, that begs the question, why won't Skyrim die? Well, partially, it's because you fanboys won't let it. What's up guys, it's Nerku here, back at it again for a brand new video, and today I'm taking aim at everyone's proverbial knee in the hopes of finally killing off the adventurer in all of you. But let's just say in this case, my arrow always finds its mark. Before we begin, consider supporting the channel by dropping a like, and if you're new here, subscribing would be a great way to see more outlandish content just like this. It'll be much appreciated, I know that you, your mom, your girlfriend, and your dick will probably thank me for such amazing and luscious content. Anyways, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Bethesda's poster boy and a staple of all game design for the last half decade. It's sad that it's come to this, but I do believe that it is time for this game, its memes, its influence, and everything else about it to finally just die. Like, permanently. No more moving it forward into the future. No more resurrecting it from the dead. I'm serious. So let's absorb that motherfucking dragon soul and move on with our lives, okay? Skyrim is officially a problem. I'm not normally one to be mad about a game's lifespan, as a matter of fact I kind of encourage games to have long lifespans, but part of the reason why I'm mad is more so the length of the game without original updates from Bethesda themselves. It's difficult to point hard exact numbers as to how long the actual vanilla game is because it takes each person a different amount of time to complete X number of tasks. So after doing some basic research of the overall game, I was able to ascertain that there's an average of about 60-ish or so hours to complete the vanilla game. Now before all you fanboys start hitting me up in the comment section, get all angry and whatnot saying, that's just a base game, that doesn't include the DLC, and well actually, no one needs to hear all that, okay? I know this doesn't include the DLC and it is just a base estimate for the vanilla game. No one cares that you spent almost 300 hours or even more in the game, okay? That's not a f***ing achievement, my guy. It's just sad. Get a life. Maybe work a job. Go on a date or possibly have your first kiss. Like, really, bruv. You're pathetic. So yeah, um, when you factor in the DLC, and this is me being very generous here, after doing some research, I was able to ascertain that there's about an additional maybe 40 to 50 hours, but let's just go ahead and say 60 for sake of argument. So 60 or so more hours of content that Bethesda had created under the glorious leadership of our Lord and Savior, Todd Howard, and his sexy ass, and his sexy ass, they put into so much development, so much work into this overall game, and the game was absolutely massive. This is not a small feat, by the way, and I must add that out of the all 120 hours or so of the game, I haven't fully 100% complete the game either. That's not the point here though. I'm not mad about the game. I'm not going to go back and play those missed hours, okay? Skyrim is a massive game. That's not the problem. So what is the problem? Well, the problem is, is that Bethesda is continually, even in 2017, milking the absolute c out of it. I mean, they have definitely stretched the game as far as it's gonna go, and then some. Let me go ahead and explain once again before I end up getting a little bit too much hate, too many dislikes on this video. I love Bethesda. I love their games. I remember playing Morrowind on the original Xbox even, and it wasn't the best game I ever played, but I do remember it being a fun experience. I'm a huge fan of a lot of their releases, and it seems like Bethesda has changed lately. It seems like such a great company like Bethesda is adopting less than favorable practices nowadays. Skyrim was a great game. Modding it on the PC added a brand new lifespan to the game, added new breath and new change and creative differences into the game. It was awesome. It completely gave the game an entire new subculture. There's entire channels devoted specifically to Skyrim modding. It's great. It's incredible. I really enjoyed it. Keyword, enjoyed. Skyrim is a relic now, built on an outdated engine with old school mechanics. There's no amount of modding that can actually fix the core problems in the game. And as a matter of fact, it works exactly opposite. The more mods I put into the game, the more buggy and unstable it becomes. And to kind of illustrate my point even further, I was going to use original game footage in this video. And I can't, simply because my Skyrim isn't behaving properly anymore and a fresh install completely wipes out all my mods. And so I had to reinstall all my mods and I'm trying to go ahead and get the best game footage possible. And I'm going to have to put another 16, 17 hours just into playing the game in order to get you guys the best footage. That's not going to happen. Sure, does mods overall make the game more fun? 
but it's more like fun in the sense of the game is a polished turd and it's not necessarily a diamond in the rough kind of fun. Why do you think that there's so many people who are actually playing Skyrim only to like look at the new mods or experience the new mods or just role play or literally just have fashion shows? There aren't people going out there and having these unique core game experiences anymore because it's old news. The adventure died in 2013 and you would have to either been living under a rock or solely own Nintendo consoles to not have experienced Skyrim until now. Starting this year, as of November 17, 2017, exactly six years and six days after its initial release, Nintendo Switch owners can now experience Skyrim in all its glory and even take it on the go. And I'm not gonna lie, that sounds amazing. It sounds really fun if I actually went anywhere and if I actually had a chance to play games when I was on the go, because if I leave anywhere, I'm the one that's driving, so it's very strange. Anyways, regardless, the ability to experience an open world on a console that is kind of portable sounds awesome and we know that it's skyrim so it's gonna be a decent game at least at the core it's gonna be a good game or good intention game so as a consumer you're wondering how much does it cost 20 30 bucks right on right let's go ahead and give it a look i mean the game is six years old now so 20 30 bucks i think it what the fuck? are you kidding me seriously 59.99 what the hell does it include mods even new missions new things to explore new experiences come on i mean how can Bethesda justify full price for such an old game? Many of us have already played this game and even own superior copies already. Let's talk about this for a second, bro. Like seriously, are mods even possible on the Nintendo Switch? If so, do they still suffer from the same limitations that they do on other consoles? Why would someone want this? And why would they buy it for this price? I mean, this is surely a problem. Think about it, if the mods do work, what about the SD card issues that people are already experiencing on the Nintendo Switch? The storage capacity on the Nintendo Switch is mediocre at best and abysmal. People have to buy external storage over and over and over again just to get their games to fit. So now you mean to tell me that I have to buy the game for full price and now I have to buy SD cards in order to store the mods that I want for the game if, if it even allows mods in the first place. Also, doesn't that Switch run on some type of, I don't know, Tegra 1 like mobile chip anyway? Are those graphics going to be up to par as they do on the PS4 or Xbox One? But for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and say that it is up to par. Let's go ahead and say it is. Then my whole entire argument boils down to why. Does anyone even want this? Why would anyone want this? After all this time, where the f*** is Elder Scrolls 6? If you go ahead and just take a moment and think about the trend of Elder Scroll releases over time, you can see a clear pattern. Morrowind came out in 2002, Oblivion came out in 2006, Skyrim came out in 2011, and so a lot of fans assume that Elder Scrolls 6 will come out in 2016, right? Right? Wrong. Instead, what we got was Elder Scrolls Online back in 2015. And what the f*** was that? What the f*** was that? Todd Howard, explain this to me. Someone explain this to me. I've been waiting this entire time for this game, and it won't even be released. I mean... I've planned my entire life around it. High school graduation, 2011, Skyrim release, college graduation, Fallout release, marriage, 2016, Elder Scrolls 6, right? Or maybe to coincide with the birth of my firstborn child. What about that couple who named their kid Dovahkiin back in 2011? They must be really pissed off, like when you think about it. They were promised copies of every new Elder Scrolls game, and Bethesda's skimping out on it by not releasing quality games. I mean, like, really, Bethesda? Really, bruv? I named my kid Dovahkiin for a copy of Skyrim, a copy of Skyrim Remastered, and Elder Scrolls Online. Really? That doesn't really seem like it adds up. I mean, think about it though. At the end of the day, I have no problem with Bethesda or any publisher taking their time to make the game great again. Like to really go through and make sure the experience is one of a kind, immersive and amazing. To make the game massive and to make it stretch to limits like it's never been done before. That's awesome. But when we ask you about it, you say time and time again that you aren't working on it. And deep down, I'm okay with that. I want you guys to express yourselves creatively and make good games and to be happy when you work on your games. But why the f*** are you wasting your resources on remasters of a game that's six years old now? Why are you re-releasing Skyrim for the third time? Doesn't that take time, effort, and money? Why rework on Skyrim at all? I mean, if you're gonna work on an Elder Scrolls game, why not work on the one that matters? the new one. God, someone, please help me. Please explain to me why this is happening, bruv. I'm, 
I'm offended. I'm literally appalled that you think that we're all so stupid to buy your game yet again for the fourth time. Think about it. The initial release, I bought it on console. Then I bought it for PC. Then it came out remastered for console, so I bought it again. And now you're saying that it's on Switch, so if I want to get it on mobile, I should buy it again? Of course, let, let's be real here. I don't need to buy it again, but it's literally the same experience being released again. It's not even put on a fresh new coat of paint. There's barely anything different about it. It's insane. Were the 23 million 270 plus units sold in the 1.3 billion dollars in revenue not enough for you bethesda like seriously bruv i don't understand aren't new games too hard for you to make if so should we go to obsidian and have them make it should we ask them to they could probably reform rebuild the company and still develop the game faster than you just saying what's next for skyrim bethesda we have a real problem here are you going to announce skyrim on ios next maybe skyrim on android next Okay guys, that's it for me. Tell me what your favorite moment from Skyrim was down in the comment section below. Was it possibly the modded Tetris? If so, let me know. Also, if you liked today's video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you are new here, then maybe you should consider subscribing as I make new content almost every single day. Also, if you didn't like today's video, it's okay. Go ahead and tongue punch that dislike button and then go f yourself, you Bethesda fanboy. Realize your bias and move on with your life. With that said, I'm Nerku, aka Dildo Baggins, and I will catch every single one of you weird AF mofos in the next video. Peace. This is my game. This is my game. Finding the strange. Exposing the man. Hyper lovers be wet. They need to stay over there. These boys are insane. This is my game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh.